Navajo is spoken in the Four Corners area, so Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado. Um, it's probably the most robust of all the Native American languages in the United States. Some estimates are it's as many as 100,000 speakers. Um, and uh, it's got, they've got a lot of uh, resources in the language as well. And as part of the Bilingual Education Act in the 70s, 1970s, uh, they were able to create a, a number of different kinds of materials in Navajo for literacy and working with kids. So, um, yeah, it's definitely the strongest and most vibrant of all our U.S. languages, um, but it is, like all the indigenous languages of the U.S., endangered. One of the reasons that it's endangered is there were a number of policies that the U.S. Gover government had that were designed to eradicate Native culture and Native people and so um, people were obviously shipped off into different areas and in fact the Navajo went through the long march where they were taken away from their lands, forced to leave their lands and then were allowed to come back. Um, that's like the trail of tears for Navajo for out west. And of course many people are aware of the Navajo Code Talkers. Um, there were actually a number of tribes in the U.S. that participated in using their languages to create codes um, so that they could communicate with each other and, um, and uh, protect U.S. positions in World War II. Something like PLA, um, it has these sounds called adjectives. So we have a T, a K, and a P, so for PT and K, we, have, we say them like that. But in Navajo and other related Athabascan languages, you have ejectives where your glottis, your vocal cords, are doing some different actions. And so that would be something like um, tin, tin, tin. Um, so that's pretty exciting. So I think it can really give you exposure to all the different creative ways that the human brain and human body can use, can do language.